you can see on the screen beta we're going to start with a new topic reading today okay so we'll just read for 2 3 minutes and then i'll start explaining you can quickly read what is shared on the screen hari up keep reading then we'll go down keep scrolling and then understand we're going to read about specifically about breeding and then very soon we're going to move on plant breeding okay when we say breeding what is it it is a technique of manipulation of plant species we're going to do some manipulation in the species of the plants so that the crops can be grown in a better variety and beta if they are in better variety obviously their commercial value is going to improve and when i say better variety it means disease resistant varieties so we have a lot of uh, classical plant breeding techniques where we have hybridization of pure lines yesterday we had already discussed what is pure lines so first we are going to have hybridization of pure lines then it will be followed by artificial selection when i say artificial selection it means you have to select the desirable characters desirable characters the production should be high the nutrition level of the product should be high and they should be resistant to diseases so these are all the desirable characters so if in exams it comes what are the desirable characters you need to mention this now how can you do this there are three steps first increase tolerance to environmental stress environmental stress means it could be salinity that is the amount of salt present it could be extreme temperatures in extreme temperature means very high or very low temperatures second is resistant to pathogens like viruses fungus and bacteria and the third is high yielding and improved quality of crop plants high yielding crop plants could be the size of the grains the color of the grain the shape or the flowers or it could be the protein content as well so this is in general what is breeding now we'll move on to the specific part of plant breeding i'm sharing it on the screen please read it for 2 minutes
Now we're going to be very specific and we'll be reading about plant breeding programs. Giving you two, three minutes, read on the screen, then I'll explain. You're going to understand about the programs or the steps in breeding a new genetic variety of a crop. New variety of a crop. What are these steps? Bits? First is collection of variability. As the word variability tells you, variety or difference. So what do we do in this? In this step, we take the pre-existing genetic variability available in wild varieties. We will go for the selection of wild varieties, species, and the relatives of these species. We collect them, we preserve them, and then we evaluate the characteristics that are they a prerequisite? Do we actually need them? And then we go and effectively exploit them. Effectively exploit means we're going to collect them, we're going to use them. And the entire collection of plants or the seeds which you have collected because of their diverse alleles in a crop is what we call as germplasm collection. You're collecting different, different varieties. This collection is known as germplasm collection. After that, you need to evaluate and select the parents. You've already collected now, so the second step is going to be evaluation. It is carried out by, what are you going to do? You're going to evaluate the germplasm that you have collected. You will identify the plants which have the desirable combination of characters. And then whichever selected plants you have, they're multiplied, they're hybridized, and we let them allow, we let them go for self-pollination, okay? Pure lines will be created, however, so whenever you want, you can create pure lines in this method. So the first step I discussed with you was collection of variability in which we collect different species, which is known as germplasm collection. And the second is evaluating and selecting parents of these kinds. I mean, after you've collected the germplasm, you're going to evaluate these parents. Now very quickly, I'll scroll down. We're going to read the next step. It's a very simple topic. Last topic of your syllabus. You need to read about the next topic that is cross hybridization among selected parents. Read quickly about this evaluation, selection of parents, cross hybridization among selected parents. And then I'll tell you how to select and test the superior recombinants.
The next part that you can see on the screen is what data. It is evaluation of parents. It is carried out by evaluating the germplasm. Okay. And then cross hybridization of the two parents is done. Cross hybridization will give you hybrids. Hybrids which will genetically combine. And why are we combining them? For desirable characters. Like you could have taken the collection of pollen grains from whichever plant you desire, the characteristics, male plant, of course. Take pollen grain from them and then place them artificially on the stigma of the selected flower. Whichever flower you have selected, the stigma could be placed on that. And then obviously, the desired characters will be incorporated. The chances of having a desirable combination is usually one in few to a thousand carried out. You may do 100 times and then out of those 100, the possibility that perfectly it would be done is only 1 to 2 percent. So I'm moving on to the next part now. We are going to select and test the superior recombinants now. What are you going to do in this beta? Selection of plants among the progeny of the hybrids. You've already got a hybrid progeny now. A progeny which has hybrids now. Hybrids means it already has your desirable characters. Some of them may have incorporated more. Some of them may incorporate less of the desired characters. So amongst the progeny also, you need to select the desired characters. So we'll proceed now. The next is selection and testing of the uh, superior recombinants. Let's read about this, then I'll explain. We are going to study for the next topic now, beta. Cross hybridization among selected parents. I had discussed with you just now. 
where we are going to cross hybrid the two parents from the desired plants we had taken the pollen from the male plants and we had shed it or placed it on the stigma of the female plant then after that what is going to happen we are going to get artificially incorporated traits okay the desired traits would be artificially incorporated they will enter into the new progeny so this is a very simple way of getting the desired characters in plants we have to select and test the superior recombinants now do you have what you have got is the recombinants because they have new characters to combine in them so we call them as recombinants so we need to select them now okay this is how you are going to select them selection we are going to continue with the selection and testing of superior recombinants you will select plants among the progeny whatever desired characters are there because we know we are going to get superior parents this is known as hybrid vigor or this is known as heterosis so these better variety of plants are then self pollinated for many generations we do not allow cross pollination for many generations only self pollination is allowed and after many generations the state will good morning ma'am good morning which is uniform or homozygous stage yes you want to say something ma'am but i am recording a class because nobody has joined i am recording a class for so the taken seat later you want to say something bolo yes ma'am ma'am mohit ki tabiyat kharab hai full fever ho raha hai to wo gaya class nahi le paunga aaj ki to usne kabhi class li hai pehle ये बताओ एक्सक्यूज क्यों दे रहा है वो आज तक आया है वो कभी क्लास में कोई बात नहीं बेटा इंटरनल मेमोरी अमन अमन हम अमन नहीं मैं मोहित की बात कर रही हूं मोहित ने कभी क्लास ली मैं अमन की बात कर रहा हूं ये अमन तो ठीक है अमन तो बहुत सिंसियर है मुझे लगा मोहित की बात कर रहा है मैम तो भी आता है क्लास में कभी आज वैसे भी सिलेबस कंप्लीट हो रहा है फिजिक्स का शायद हो ही गया आज आज हो जाएगा फिजिक्स का भी बायो का भी आज कंप्लीट हो रहा है ये लास्ट टॉपिक बचे हुए कोई नहीं आया मैं क्लास रिकॉर्ड कर ले रही हूँ लास्ट क्लास है ये टेस्टिंग रिलीज एंड कमर्शलाइजेशन ऑफ न्यू कल्टीवर्स वी गोइंग टू डू दिस नाउ इवैल्यूएशन इज डन फॉर सिलेक्टेड लाइंस ऑफ द यील्ड एंड एग्रोनॉमिक ट्रेड्स व्हेन आई से एग्रोनॉमिक ट्रेड्स इट मींस क्वालिटी डिजीज रेजिस्टेंस सो वी आर गोइंग टू सेलेक्ट द प्लांट्स ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ क्वालिटी एंड डिजीज रेजिस्टेंस सेलेक्टेड प्लांट्स आर ग्रोन इन रिसर्च फील्ड्स and the performance is recorded whatever plants we have selected we will grow them artificially in fields which are known as research fields and then unka performance jo hai that is going to be recorded under ideal fertilizer applications irrigations ideal amount of fertilizer ideal amount of water is provided to them and then testing of the hybrid is done in the farmers field first it is done in the research field where all ideal conditions are there ideal amount of fertilizer ideal amount of irrigation then the same hybrid is planted in a farmers field so after testing the crop is grown in different locations in the country in different climatic conditions and then we compare the material with the local crop available release of the tested material is finally done in bulk after selection and certification so when we get the best results then it is introduced in the market now we are going to read about hyv and green revolution giving you 2 minutes to read hyv in india high yielding varieties agriculture is 33% of india gdp the national income 33% comes from agriculture and almost 62% of the population is involved in agriculture nowadays we have high yielding varieties of wheat and the rice also which were introduced in the year 1960 and how did we get these better varieties by hybridization because there was a lot of increase in the food production in our country this phase that is 1960s is also known as the green revolution we had lot of research development and technology between 1940 to 1970 and because of this agriculture production increased this is what we call as green revolution basically the initiative taken was norman borlaug he is known as the father of green revolution norman borlaug it was he who is known as father of green revolution so billions of people were saved from starvation high yielding varieties were developed management techniques were improved synthetic fertilizers synthetic pesticides were given to the farmers so basically lot of plant breeding techniques were done so that high yielding disease resistant varieties were there 
तो ऑटोमेटिकली क्या हो गया वीट राइस एंड वीट प्रोडक्शन बढ़ गया दिस रेवोल्यूशन इज ऑल्सो नोन एज अ ग्रीन रेवोल्यूशन वी जस्ट नीड टू रिमेम्बर वॉट इज ग्रीन रेवोल्यूशन एंड द पर्सन बिहाइंड ग्रीन रेवोल्यूशन द इनिशियटिव टेकन वॉज नॉर्मल बॉरलैग The initiative taken is Norman Borlaug, and this concept is what we call as Green Revolution. Specifically, the production of wheat and rice improved in India. Okay, so now we are going to read separately for wheat and rice and for sugar cane. How it improved? What it improved? What are the varieties which are improved by Green Revolution? So this is all about HYVs, Green Revolution, which year it took place. who is the father of green revolution this is all about it now about wheat and rice we are going to do what we are going to read about wheat and rice saranj if you want you can also leave no issues you can see the recording later i am recording the class for you people only as it is there is no response i don't think you are there also so this is the last part that we have hmm i already know you are not there dummy so we are going to move on to the next part now very quickly we are going to read about wheat and rice please read just read about the wheat and rice new varieties hybrid varieties and we'll just discuss them one by one very quickly If you see the next topic that we have is all about wheat and rice children. Okay, wheat during 1960 to 2000, the production of wheat increased from more than 11 million to 75 million tons. Earlier the production was very less. Similarly, the rice production also increased from 35 million tons to 89.5 million tons. So obviously, the production increased because of introduction of semi-dwarf varieties. They occupied less space. Noble laureate Norman Borlaug. I just told you, it was Norman who developed these semi-dwarf varieties. So, 
Wheat and semidoff varieties were introduced by International Center of Wheat and maize improvement in Mexico. So high yielding and disease resistant varieties were introduced in India also in 1963. The name of the varieties is Sonalika and Kalyan Sona. We need to remember them. Semidoff varieties of rice were also developed by IARB at International Research Institute in Philippines. We had in India Dr. M. S. Swaminathan. He is known as the father of green revolution in India. He arranged the visit to Dr. Warburg for obtaining wheat possessing Norwin 10 variety gene. And then the derivatives of these semi dwarf varieties were introduced in India also. So the better yielding semi dwarf varieties of rice are Jaya and Ratna. They were later developed in India and Indian names were given to them. Let's read about sugarcane now quickly. Read about sugarcane, the varieties of sugarcane. Also about millets, children. Sugarcane, you know only the scientific name. It originated originally in North India. The old, earlier sugarcane had a poor sugarcane tint. Later, we had it in South India as well. The ones in South India had very thick stems and the sugar content was very high. The stem was very thick and the sugar content was very high. So the hybrid breeding levels led to the development of high yielding varieties related to water stress. They could easily take the water stress. So successfully high yielding hybrid varieties were obtained of maize. We had this maize, jowar and bajra. We put them all together in the category of millets, maize, jowar and bajra. Now please read about plant breeding for disease resistance. We are very quickly going to read about disease resistant varieties.
we are reading about what we are reading about the plant breeding of disease resistant varieties how we had a different varieties of plant breeding which were disease resistant is our prime importance now we just discussed that we have the uh, hybrid varieties hybrid varieties obviously beta must be based on what must be based on certain characteristics which are useful to us so what are those characteristics we are going to study that okay see uh, resistance to the host plant is the ability to prevent the pathogen from causing disease which is determined by the genetic conditions of the host plant whether the plant will get infected by a pathogen or not it all depends upon the resistance power of the host plant some host plants they get easily affected the others may not so it depends on what children it depends entirely on the resistance of the host plant crops are required for disease resistant varieties so there is a wide range of fungal bacterial and viral pathogens which affect the cultivated crop species especially in the tropical climates if you go to tropical areas the plants are more prone towards these uh, attacks by pathogens they could be bacterial pathogens they could be viral pathogens okay so we are going to see how disease resistant varieties are going to be developed this is just we have discussed a problem now we move on to the next methods of breeding for disease resistance i just discussed with you that we need to have disease resistance so how are we going to develop that that is what we are going to read very quickly we already know how pathogens affect or attack the plants and whether the plant will be able to save itself from the pathogen entirely depends on certain factors so what are those factors how do we create disease resistant varieties is what we are going to study now so what is the next thing we are reading beta we are talking about the conventional breeding methods conventional breeding when i say i mean the old and the traditional methods of breeding what are they called as they called as the convention methods of breeding this has been going on for hundreds of years and is still commonly used all the major food crops of today are derived from domesticated varieties so how are they obtained hybridization of pure lines and then we select the plants with desirable qualities there are certain steps for this the first step is selection and screening of the germplasm whatever germplasm was collected they selected and screened for disease resistance then hybridization of selected plants is done and then selection of the evaluated plants and we test and release the new varieties in the market so we're going to learn about this wheat the varieties himgiri resistance to leaf and stipe rust and hillbunt brassica or mustard the variety is pusa swarnim resistance to which disease white rust cauliflower pusa shubra and pusa snowball 
disease resistance to red rot and curl blight and black rot cowpea pusa komal bacterial blight is the disease chili it is pusa sada bahar and chili mosaic virus and tobacco mosaic virus but the major disadvantage of conventional breeding is that only limited number of disease resistant genes are found in crop varieties so they cannot have the resistance for many diseases but if we do it artificially then you will have resistance to lot of diseases so we'll move on to the next one that is mutation breeding what is mutation it is a process by which genetic variation is achieved through changes in the base sequence in the gene some changes done in the genes and you get a new variety this is what we call as mutation so we get a new character in the progeny which was absent in the parent generation this is mutation breeding how do we do this we are going to induce mutations in plants by various means then we'll screen the plants which have these variations and then these plants would be multiplied by further breeding also for example in moong bean the resistance to yellow mosaic virus and the powdery mildew were introduced by mutations only so today the moong bean is safe we have a lot of production of moong bean similarly resistance to yellow mosaic virus in bindi also were transferred from a wild species and then we got a new variety okay that is also known in hindi as prabhani kranti prabhani kranti basically a uh, resistance to yellow mosaic virus so what are these varieties we have got these are all varieties obtained by mosaic uh, mutation breeding artificially we have created some genetic variations which are known as mutation breeding now we going to read about plant breeding for developing resistant to insect pests how are we going to do this read it quickly uh resistance to insect pests children there are many insect which act as pest and a lot of production is affected by this okay this spoil or they cause loss to a lot of production production goes down because of these insects they are known as insect pest how do we save our plants See over here, the insect resistance to host crop plants may be by morphological, biochemical, or physiological characteristics. There are three characteristics: morphological, biochemical, or it could be physiological. So the important characters which lead to this resistance are what? Number one, we have hairy leaves in plants. If the leaves are hairy, 
then it is a resistant characteristic it gives resistance to jacids in and then cereal leaf beetle in wheat if the leaves are hairy it gives resistance second is the solid stems in wheat obviously the stems are solid they are more stronger and in common smooth leaf and absence of nectar repel hormones so if you don't have these nectar repellents they become more uh, resistant and in maize we have high aspartic acid and low nitrogen sugar content this protects them from stem borers maize is a very interesting plant how does it protect itself it's got a high level of aspartic acid and a low nitrogen and sugar content so obviously the stem borers are not attracted towards the base so we have in breeding methods for insect pest resistance also we have a lot of steps for getting the desired agronomic trait remember whenever we say desired agronomic trait it could be resistant genes germplasm collection we going to have varieties which are going to be resistant from disease pest pathogens all of them so we'll move on to the next topic very quickly we are about to complete this part today see these varieties we are going to read about plant breeding for improved food quality and then biofortification that is all so we are going to read very quickly about plant breeding for developing resistant to insect pests read quickly read quickly read quickly this is a simple general topic we are going to read about plant breeding for developing resistance to pests
So we were reading about plant breeding for developing resistance to insect pests, high leaves in plants, resistance to jacids in cotton and cereal leaf. This is what we had done, children. Last one minute, two minutes left for the class. We are going to discuss very quickly about what we have done today. A quick revision is also needed. We need to do this very quickly. What is it? Plant breeding for insect pest. We studied about Pusa Gaurav. Lack of adequate food with nutrition requirements in the world as more than 840 million people in the world are deprived of food. Majority of people are unable to buy enough fruits, vegetables, fish and meat. So they suffer from deficiency. This is also known as hidden hunger. Essential micronutrients are absent from the diet like iron, vitamin A, iodine, zinc. So obviously there is an increase in the risk of diseases. It reduces the lifespan also. We're going to study about biofortification, the last topic method of breeding crops with a high level of nutrients to improve the health of the public. The objective of breeding for improved nutrition quality is to enhance the protein content, the vitamin content, the micronutrient content, and the mineral content. Maize hybrids with increased amount of amino acids, lysine, and tryptophan. Atlas 66 is a wheat variety which has a high protein content. Similarly, iron fortified rice these days increases the iron content in the common varieties. We have the Indian Agriculture Research Institute, New Delhi, <clears throat> which has developed vitamin A enriched carrots, vitamin C enriched bitter gourds, iron and calcium enriched spinach, and protein enriched beans. What are the advantages of using SCP as food? The microorganisms used for the production of SCP are very fast growing, so huge quantity can be obtained from a very small piece of land. SCPs are very important single cell proteins, and then the plant tissue culture. We've done in class 10th also a quick revision of plant tissue culture. 